Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, we have some amazing news from Qualcomm and we're gonna be talking about how the future is XR. If you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, consider subscribing. Okay guys, let's get into this. So Qualcomm has announced that it's partnering with major smartphone providers to bring us XR. So what exactly is XR? Well, it's a combination of a lightweight display that connects to a 5G enabled smartphone via a USB-C cable. Something like this was teased back with the original Vive Cosmos promotional material, and the speculation back then was that this would require a cell phone with a Snapdragon 855 or the upcoming 865 mobile platform. Well, as it turns out, that's exactly the case. Currently, many manufacturers are already in the process of developing different types of VR viewers, and Qualcomm will standardize compatibility with a certification program. Any certified XR viewer will work with any certified XR smartphone. This is amazing news because not only will it allow us to avoid compatibility issues, like we saw in the early days of VR, but it also sets up a plethora of alternatives to Apple's upcoming AR device, the Apple glass. The certification process also sets up some minimum requirements protecting the XR market from cheap products that dilute the entire brand. So unlike VR having to deal with the Oculus Go or the defunct Gear VR, XR should have a much less convoluted product launch. Some of these certification requirements include six degrees of freedom, a maximum amount of display latency, and a minimum resolution. Over 375 smartphones that meet this criteria have already either been announced or are in development. This includes smartphones from all major producers and also some that have already released like the Samsung Galaxy S20. It's projected that by 2025, there will be over 3 billion XR capable devices out there. XR viewers can vary from simple glasses with embedded screens all the way to traditional VR HMDs. The expectation is the VR and AR market will converge more over time, with all devices becoming wireless within the next four years, and eventually relying solely on 5G networks for computing power within the next five to 10 years. While I agree standalone and wireless devices are indeed the future, it's hard to imagine the raw computing power of a local PC ever truly being replaced. Qualcomm does note that 5G cloud computing power is more beneficial to AR rather than traditional VR, something I have mentioned frequently in the past, but that's not to say there's no potential benefit to VR in general. Now the expected use cases for XR devices completely overlaps with standard smartphone usage. There's also additional training and workplace usage scenarios. Video games can be taken to the next level with full AR overlays or high quality mobile VR content. Movies become more immersive and are easier to watch compared to simply using a smartphone alone. A heads up display can give you information for activities such as your run or even display GPS information. A focal point for Qualcomm is the usage of 5G networks, which provide high bandwidth and low latency. This allows us to outsource computing power to the cloud, enabling lighter, sleeker, and longer lasting devices. NVIDIA is already working on Cloud XR, and if anyone can pull off cloud-based VR or AR gaming, it's them. Their desktop streaming service, GeForce Now, already provides an amazing experience, but Cloud XR is not limited to just gaming applications. Now there is some projected forecasts for the growth of XR and speculation on how standalone devices will begin to replace traditional VR devices. I always take these with a grain of salt, but leveraging a device that almost everyone already has, namely a smartphone, ensuring compatibility and quality control through a certification program, major players on board such as Samsung, Apple, HTC, and Verizon, well, the future of XR does truly look bright. Qualcomm also has a new chip designed exclusively for next generation XR devices 
which is the Qualcomm XR2. It has the ability to support up to 8K resolution screens, seven cameras, and twice the computing power of the Oculus Quest. So it looks like the next generation standalone VR and AR devices will be pretty darn amazing. And lucky for us, the first of those devices is set to release by the end of this year. The first product to market will most likely be the Nreal Lite, which at first glance just looks like a pair of sunglasses. Now they do trade off sleekness for a low field of view, and I'm really waiting for a higher end XR product. I'm completely okay looking like some crazy steampunk nut job if I can augment reality in my entire field of view. Okay guys, so that was a basic overview of XR. The biggest takeaway is in the near future, you will buy a lightweight display, plug it into your phone, and then enjoy some amazing AR or VR content. Now this is going to be an early adopters market for the next year or two, but the overall future implications are absolutely amazing. This has the potential to make AR and VR go mainstream. Okay guys, if you're looking for additional information, there are links in the description because as I stated, this was just a brief overview. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and why not leave some comments letting me know what you are most excited for. All right guys, I'll see you on next time.